Um, so oh, I like your hair tonight. Very nice. Thank you. I got it cut on Saturday and they, they always get ambitious and straighten it. It looks nice. Thank you. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're going to get hell for the last story tonight. Hmm. And we're going to, I'm going to have to put as many disclaimers as I can on this one because it, I'm going to catch Westboro hell. Baptist church decided to condemn Dr. Who no. or something. No, although there there was a report that came out that claimed Doctor Who was racist, or a book that came out that claimed it was racist. Well, I know people were very upset that the new Doctor isn't black or a woman, and or, or anything woman. other than a white dude. Yeah, eh. maybe he'll be gay. Maybe. Actually, I don't think the Doctor really Doctor's kind of whatever he wants to be. Oh, because he's he's not human. I was really kind of pulling for Helen Mirren. I mean, I've seen two episodes of Doctor Who ever. <laughs> <laughs> but if they busted like fucking Judy Dench or Helen Mirren out, I would have been all about it. I've never I seen the show it. that much, but I want this person. But, you know, Al, as Doctor Who, let's do this thing. Maybe we can get Daniel Craig in just so she can yell at him a little bit. <laughs> Good times. So, uh, are you ready for this week? I'm not sure now. (laughs) We'll get there. Slowly but steadily. All right, let's start off with our intro. That's not the right one. That's um, the wrong one. Um, Whoops. Shut up. I'm having a night. That's the right one. (laughs) Each week, Catherine goes out on the worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings it back here. Okay, and the radio did all right. Brings it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And our first one is kind of a short one. Not a whole lot really to say about it, just just to comment and move on. Because what are you doing? I was trying to clean a frame because I realized it didn't have a hippo companion. (laughs) I literally have like. I think I have like 10 or 12 stuffed hippos just stuffed under my desk. Because after the live show's over, I just kind of tossed it under the desk. And I don't always remember to put them back in their assigned hippo spot. So, like, I just have like 10 or 12 hippos, like, stuffed under my desk. So, I was like, oh, crap, I don't have a hippo. Well, I have my emergency reserve hippos down <laughs> here. I can probably get that without leaning out of frame or not. Our first one tonight, it's a short one. It's not, like I said, there's not really a whole bunch we can add here. But I did think it was stupid enough we should comment on. Um, it's politics, but it's, I don't care. It's, it's not even American politics. I don't care what party you are. This is just a fucking idiot. Australian politics. Woman quits poll race. Mistakes Islam for country. Stephanie Bannister, what? candidate from an anti-immigration party in Australia, apologized and quit the election race after she was widely mocked for mistaking Islam for a country. Bannister, 27, of One Nation Party, was contesting a seat in Queensland. She had been in politics for 48 hours. Bannister also confused the term harem with the Holy Quran and suggested Jews worshipped Jesus Christ. The interview, which aired on Wednesday, went viral on social media. I don't oppose Islam as a country, this is a quote, but I do feel their laws should not be welcome here in Australia. Okay. This was a, I am amazed at how fast she got all the things wrong. Yeah. That's just so much wrong at one moment. That's, that's incredible. I want to know the context in which she confused the word harem with the Quran. That's that's not even they don't even sound the same. And they're not even close to be like, no, it's not harem as I know the spelling. So maybe there's two different uses for harem. But I'm assuming they mean the kind of harem where you have like a room full of wives. It's just that is amazing. But if H-A-R-A-M is a different meaning, then I'm an idiot. I don't know. I, just, I, I only know the H-A-R-E-M meaning. Um, I, I just, I, I, this, 
okay, folks, I don't care what political party you belong to. If your candidate has only been in politics for 48 hours, rethink oh, wait, that shit. What? Oh, haram is forbidden. Okay. So like food halal is good. Uh, haram is forbidden. That's with them in the Muslim faith. That's still wrong. It's still. Yeah, that's still really, haram. really, okay. really off base. That's still but wrong. Thank you, Emily Dash for helping me out there. That's still wrong. Um, but but yeah, it's it's it, yeah, that's. You need a little more more time than 48 hours. It's it's not like, you know, a, a, a lifetime original show or it's not like one of those things on Discovery Channel. More than 48 hours to get shit down. I just don't know. I guess the Jews worshipped Jesus Christ. I think it's pretty widely known that. Jews don't believe in the divinity <laughs> of Christ. Like they think Jesus was a great guy, yeah. but not. I don't understand why worshiping. everybody has they a very problem with this. Do not worship Jesus Christ. That's one of the main dif- differences between Judaism and Christianity. I don't know why anybody has a problem with those nice Jewish people. We're just the same. <laughs> All right. Um. We're back to our we're going to ease into the stupid. Well, that was plenty stupid. We're going to ease into like our at least regular. Wikipedia. Some world. I history. know. Yeah, I've got Wikipedia on my fucking phone. On my it's phone. Not, it's not it's surpri- it's appallingly easy not to be a moron. And yet so many morons. I know. Speaking of morons, um. You know, I don't have a good segue for this. Just moron. Just just fucking moron. This is from Mafreeze Bro. Mafreeze Bro. Um, I feel like David Letterman. Drug dealer alerts police to stolen weed. A 19 year old man was recently arrested after alerting police to the fact that his safe containing a large amount of marijuana and drug money had been stolen from his Mafreeze Bro residence during a home invasion. The admitted drug dealer was arrested August 1st after detectives located the safe only a few hours after the home invasion. It was on the same night, Harrison said, the man allegedly told Officer Carl Wilkins he was upset because, quote, he sold marijuana for a living and the only item taken from the home was a safe. On finding a safe that matched the description of the missing one, detectives took it to the Criminal Investigations Division to wait for the man to come pick it up. Once there, a canine officer alerted to the safe, indicating the odor of narcotics. You do understand what criminal means, right? Just because somebody stole your illegal shit, it doesn't make your illegal shit legal. Uh, d- did you not like, understand the this concept? This is not a situation where two negatives make a positive. I, I wonder if he's sitting around wondering, you know, maybe I should go get a store down at the mall. It'd make this a little easier. I don't see why I shouldn't. Well, they have them in California. Well, yeah, but this isn't California. No, but like for medical marijuana. Yeah. Like they're they're not like head shops. Like they're legit marijuana dispensaries where you can get you can get it baked into food and you can, you know, but for medicinal oh, purposes. Oh, okay, okay. Like you have to walk in with a prescription. Xterra. Two bongs don't make a right. <laughs> mm. But yeah, like um <sighs> You don't get to just open up pots are us. No. And, and it's like. I, there's a reason why you don't like the. There's a reason why all those songs are about fuck the police. There's a reason that, you know, there's there's a reason. Have you missed all of this shit? To be fair, I don't think the point of the song Fuck the Police well, is no, because no. they arrest you for illegal activities. I think it is more to do with brutal beatings okay. and racism. Okay, yeah, all right. You got me on that one. But still. Uh, they arrest us when we do things wrong. Okay, yeah. Still, but. but you know. And it's not. I, still, your point stands. And it's not like you can call in a referee on this shit. You know, it's not like. He took my stuff. Yeah, you don't. Toughen up, dude. 
That doesn't make your illegal stuff suddenly magically legal. You gotta pull some Heisenberg on this shit. Toughen the fuck up. I should probably start watching that show. You should. It's almost over, so you have the complete thing. You'll be able to watch beginning to end. That was... I leaned on the hippo button. (laughs) I think the button that makes it fart got shifted somewhere. Oh, there it is. Yeah, the button, like, moved inside the hippo. Its intestines are not in the right place. And I just leaned on it, and it made that noise. Wonderful. Thank you, Mike. So, yeah, you found this story, and a bunch of other people found this story, and men, brace yourselves. I don't know if this is really stupid so much as what the fuck? Oh, actually, my my boyfriend found this one. Yeah, Tom found this. I What the fuck? Fuck. I I just And what's funny is we covered something similar to this, except it was happening in prison. Oh no, no, okay, this isn't that one. No, this isn't that one. No, this is the other one you found. Okay, yeah. Fuck you, nature. Fuck you, nature. This when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, as the saying goes, male skinny dippers in Scandinavia are being warned about a fish infamous for munching on testicles. The Paku, native to South America, was found by fishermen in the uh, Danish-Swedish Strait of Orsund. Um, the fish is, has big teeth and looks menacing. It's generally known as a friendly cousin to the piranha. A friendly cousin to the piranha? The Paku's large teeth aren't as sharp as the piranhas, but are fully capable of severing finishing lines and fingers. And the Paku is a vegetarian, so why should swimmers beware? Paku love crushing nuts with their powerful jaws and sometimes mistake the male reproductive organs for their favorite snack. I like that it doesn't tell you what its favorite snack is. Nuts. Loves crushing nuts. Well, no. No, it says. The organs, I think they mean nuts in... No, I think it means actually nuts. There they, are no underwater nuts. They fall out of trees and the, and the fish eat them. In South America, anyway. Really? Yes. Literal nuts, see? But it thinks the other nuts are the real I nuts. They were going, I figured they were being euphemistic. Nope. I would, I'm just, you know, imagine how surprised that fish would be. This is chewier than I remember. And louder. (laughs) Mr. Peanut doesn't scream. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck you, nature. Why do you do this shit to us? So, okay, let's play Would You Rather. (laughs) Let's play Would You Rather with horrifying with horrifying Mm. sea creatures. Would you rather have a Paku chomp your nuts off, or would you rather have a Kandiro fish swim up your urethra? Paku. Really? Paku. Why? Because even if without the testicles, the shit will still function. Wow, they're all going with that. That's... Yeah. I thought you'd go the other way. Nope. Once you get the other fish out, you're nope. your bait tackler intact. If you get the other fish out. Sometimes well, it gets in there. And it's, it's coming out. It's not going to set up a condo in there. Penis condo. That's that's weird little idea. But yeah, I just and this is this is one of those things. Climate change, whatever you think causes it. Shit like this is going to keep happening. The world is going to get weirder. Well, they said I saw another the other story. Um, story on this was um, they think it's oh no it's in here Hmm. amateur aquarium owners are dumping these fish because they can't feed them or they get bored with it or whatever they just dump it in the nearest body of water this is why Florida is full of fucking snakes yes the Everglades are being taken over Full of fucking and, like giant and goddamn they're moving up the coast. They're moving up the eastern seaboard at an alarming rate. And they're eating they're eating deer and shit. 
90%. This is, why, this is why we have the snakehead fish in America that's eating chihuahuas and walking on land. Shit's getting weird. We're stupid. And, and that's, I think, it's why we have killer bees in the United States, too. They crossbred. Yep. With the different kinds African, of bees. With the African bees. And now we have fuck you bees. We have fuck you bees. They should just call them fuck you bees. Okay. Um, this is why things like, I honestly believe that like, here's where I get crazy and everyone thinks I'm nuts, but like, did you hear about the sinkhole this morning that like swallowed up half a resort outside Disney World? No. Nah. In Florida, fucking sinkhole opened up under a villa in a Disney resort. And like, People had to like jump out a window like people almost got swallowed up. California's on fire pretty much year round these days. Like I kind of I kind of think the earth has decided fuck humanity. Let's just purge these motherfuckers because we're better off without them. You know what? What George- like 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 a really violent version of that Shyamalan movie, The Happening. Only- like nature is just like, you know what, humans? You know what George Carlin said? He said the only reason humans exist was because the earth wanted plastic. It's got the plastic, doesn't need us anymore. Um, I think it's getting to that point. You know, th- there's a saying in uh, journalism. Um, nobody covers a dog bites man story, but they all cover a man bites dog story. Yes. I don't exactly know how what this falls into, but it's certainly interesting. Naked man arrested for chasing cars in intersection. Just wouldn't be a week without a naked man, would it? Wouldn't be a week without a naked man. That's a, that's that's going to go on our tombstones. Um, Bloomington police arrested. That was a, going on my tombstone anyway. <laughs> Bloomington police arrested a naked 19 year old man early Saturday, Saturday for chasing and yelling at motorists. They're telling police he was high on LSD. He was arrested in charge of public nudity, resisting law enforcement, and disorderly conduct. An officer responded to the call. Uh, Colin W. Weddle was in the middle of the intersection uh, in nothing but a pair of shorts, chasing and yelling at passing cars. Responding officer noted Weddle was foaming at the mouth. Um, Cole said Weddle resisted the, police, the responding officer and detained him, stripping his shorts and he stripped his shorts. Okay. They tried to detain him. I was mad for a minute there. That That's they, not they naked. Was- Falsely advertised naked. No, it's he's stripping his shorts and returned to chasing and yelling at traffic. So what happened was he had his shorts on. They tried to catch him. He decided to up the ante. He's like, oh, really, fuckers? And then they tackled him. Oh, in an intersection. Oh. With no shorts. Nothing down there likes asphalt. No. Nothing in that region is a... Male or female, nothing there is a friend to asphalt. That's going to leave a mark. It's going to leave many marks. He's going to be pulling gravel out of his dick for like a month. Why does it clink when you pee? You don't want to know. This is again another case of one of those. Why would people do this fucking drug? This is one of those bad drugs. Well, okay, LSD. Yeah, no, L- not LSD as I understand. Like, I've never done LSD, but as I understand it, people generally quite enjoy it. This is not what I would call enjoying it. Transcendental experiences and shit. Well, he was probably enjoying it up until the point where he got tackled naked into the asphalt. He was, he was probably having a fine time yelling at the cars. It, was he hallucinating himself as a German shepherd? Maybe. Is that you know is 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 he having a deep into introspective? Maybe experience? all the cars were sheep, and he was a sheep dog. Maybe he was Babe. Well, that's just weird. I don't know how I got there. I don't know how you I, got there either. What the, what, what the hell? Yeah, he says yeah. LSD. I don't think LSD. No, no. He, especially the foaming at the mouth part. Yeah, that's special. This is an. I think, you know, he thought he had LSD. 
but somebody might have sold him something else. I think we know what really happened here. I think he was one of the people that taste tested the stem cell burger. And the end has begun. The end has begun. You're, you're going to hold on to that one, I take it, for a while. Okay. I know how the zombie apocalypse starts. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, it's, I, okay. Um, I liked the Hunger Games. I know lots of people watched it, read it. They liked the Hunger Games. And it's an interesting concept. It's just, it, I, I'm not exactly sure this was what we we're supposed to take away from it. Um, a summer camp based on the Hunger yeah. Games. Yeah. I don't want to kill you, side one camper. Um, making lanyards, roasting marshmallows, and taking swim lessons are all standard fare at a summer camp. But what about a post-apocalyptic death match where campers hunt each other to their doom? That's just what participants are doing at one's Florida summer camp. Inspired by the wildly popular Hunger Games book turned movie trilogy, County Day School in Largo, Florida established a Hunger Games summer camp with a twist sure to assure parents there's no actual killing. Although that would be that would be amazing, but no. Um, while the books focus on the har harrowing ordeal of 16-year-old Katniss Everdeen, um, the campers collect flags from other children to signify a killing. When counselors balked at the violent rhetoric, the camp opted to alter the meaning of flags to the more euphemistic, quote, collecting lives. Oh, that's totally different. Life takers and heartbreakers. I... That movie, while it was for young adults, ostensibly, that movie was supposed to be dystopia. Horrifying? Yeah, it was supposed to, it was, it was badness. It was all yeah. our worst traits taken to the farthest extreme. That's the whole point of dystopia. It wasn't futures. supposed to be inspirational. No! No! It, Okay, I I know they're just grabbing the flags. I know, but what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with just playing capture the flag? Why does it have to be the fucking Hunger Games? Are you really this? Don't. I'm waiting for the lawsuit because you know this shit ain't licensed. Yeah, this shit yeah. isn't, man. And it's, who does Hunger Games? It's uh, it's not Warner Brothers, it's is not it? Warner Brothers. Lionsgate, I think. Which is, I th isn't Lionsgate Disney? Trying to figure out, they're, they're like tent tendrils going down through. I know. There's only like two companies anymore. Yeah, there's only two companies anymore. Um, but it just, it... <laughs> yeah, this is freaking terrible. Uh, the Phantom says, this is freaking terrible. You thought you got wrecked in dodgeball. Oh, and Raider Rich, wait until Camp Fifty Shades of Grey comes. Ooh. No, no, no. We're not actually clamping nipples. It's a well, purple nipple. Well, you can kind of do that. You can take, like, dominatrix lessons. Is there a kid's summer camp for dominatrixes? No, it's it's for adults, but you can take lessons. Yeah, I know, but... Get... But those aren't kids' books. We're if your 13-year-old just... is reading Fifty Shades of Grey, you failed as a parent. For more than one reason, because for Christ's sake, get them some better prose. I just, I, it's, uh, I just, but yeah, this is a bad idea. Like maybe, maybe we don't send our kid who, and I want to know who are the parents that sent their kids to this camp? Yes. Who are the parents that, yes, you can go to gladiatorial death mash camp, <laughs> camp Jimmy. That sounds like a fine yeah. institution. You'll learn good things there. Like how to murder. I mean, I suppose you could also learn how not to get murdered, which is probably a marketable skill in this day and age. Okay, next one's from Nashville. This is, remember we, we've talked about our overreaction as a country now. Yes. How every little thing sets us off, we go straight to 11. We're, we're all like, oh my God, and we overreact. Now we have good reason to, but we do. Except this time... Nashville, Tennessee. Um, 
Perfume spray forces partial evacuation of state building. Top floor of a downtown state office building was evacuated after workers complained of a strange odor in the air. As this materials crew from the fire department responded, officials said the 12 floors evacuated as a precaution after people complained about the odor. Emergency medical technicians treated two people at the scene who complained of irritation, but no one was sent to the hospital. After consulting the state fire marshal's office, the decision was made not to evacuate the building. Okay, one of two things. Either they overreacted like a motherfucker or your perfume sucks. I think I think it's clear what happened here is somebody needs to lay off the axe. Yeah, it's that I, I've heard so many women talking about the axe. But that shit's nasty. Why do you wear it? It's really bad. They saw all those commercials. Though they're going, well, I'm going to get laid. I'm gonna put My this boyfriend on. uses it as um, car freshener. <laughs> Because he works construction, so sometimes if his work clothes are in the car, it gets a little smelly. And he says it's the only thing stronger than any smell. And I'm like, you know what? Look into Febreze. Yeah, it just because the whole the whole car smells like axe. Like, <laughs> and he doesn't put it on himself. It's just the car. You don't want to get in that car. But yeah, the car. I'm like, what? I get in the car. I'm like, hmm. It smells like douchebag in here. I just, it, how bad is the shit? <sighs> I've smelled, I, I, I hate going to the uh, department stores. I think they've mostly stopped this shit. But I remember when I was younger going to places like JCPenney's and Macy's and all this. You walk in and you go to the perfume aisle and you're like, fuck it. It's like fucking chemical warfare. Because they well, started. Let's do that anymore. Thank God. Now you have to, because I, I had to do this at Sephora occasionally. We had to get, now you have to spray it on something and hand it to people because asthmatics and everything, that's really a problem. It was, I, it was fucking chemical. It was like, shh, Yeah, you know? they're not allowed to do that anymore. Now they spray it on a card or something and give it to you. Yeah, I, I just, yeah. It, it. My my boss actually at my job has like a ridiculously keen sense of smell. Like we joke that she's a bloodhound. Because, like, if you had, if you sprayed perfume yesterday and she was off, she'll come in and know it, you know, like, so, like, you spray something she doesn't like and she's like, oh, my God, what is that? And you could have done it outside the store, like, so this is the sort of thing that could happen at my store just because my, my boss and it, you know, we joke about it, but it's got to be kind of a pain in the ass. Man, I mean. I understand people are scared. They they have every right to be, but oh, I'm getting, I'm hearing myself in in your. Why am I hearing myself? I don't know. I did for a minute on yours, yeah. and then it went away. Then it went away. Oh well. Um, I understand why people are scared. We've had a scary decade, this past decade. But you know, it's okay. It's just your car. You wonder how how annoyed the fire people are getting over this shit. Like, I mean, I agree yeah. that spraying Ed Hardy in public should be considered an act of terrorism. Oh, but it's not. You can tell I've worked in the cosmetics industry a long time when I can rattle off douchey fragrances that quick. You're a perfume hipster. Um, I am not. I just don't like things that smell bad. <laughs> I just, I, I, at this point, they're like, God, will someone please just call about a fucking kitten in a tree? I'm sick of this shit. Okay. Disclaimer. Uh-oh. I am not denigrating anyone's belief system. Not because I don't have my own opinions. Because except the Navi can. Except the Navi can. You've never respected their I've life. Never choice. respected the Navi kid. I'm not disrespecting that. I have my own opinions, but I just won't want to, don't want to deal with your bullshit. So I'm not not you, Tara. Them. Um, I'm not denigrating anyone's beliefs. So that in mind, that's that's a nice big disclaimer. Um. This is one of those instances where too much irony 
I, I don't think there was this much irony was meant to be in one confined space. And it maybe it no, this is irony. I'm pretty sure this this is just it's gotta be irony. I fucking Alanis Morissette, I have to question every time. Is this irony <laughs> or is it not? But I'm pretty sure this is. Family rescued in Pacific after sailing. Oh, these people. Where God led us. Okay, kids. What happened was uh, the Gaston Guys were a family from Arizona. Um, Hannah Gaston Guy, 26, and her husband, Sean, were fed up with abortion, homosexuality, taxes, and, quote, the state-controlled church, so they decided to take a leap of faith and see where God led us. A few weeks into their ultimately 91 days at sea, the Gaston Guys encountered, quote, squall after squall after squall that damaged their boat. Originally headed for an arch archipelago in the nation of Kir Kiribati, uh, near the International Date Line, they changed course to the Marquesas Island, but were unable to reach either of them. Along the way, they apparently suffered damage to the mast and able, unable to set a foresail, made little westward progress. They were down to some juice and some honey and whatever fish they could catch when a passing Canadian cargo ship tried to help out with supplies. <laughs> but when it came alongside, it did even more damage when the, finally the fan was picked up by a Venezuelan fishing vessel. <sighs> From there, the five were transferred to a Japanese cargo ship and after three weeks dropped off in Chile, where we paid to fly them back to the United States. The State Department paid to fly. Here's the thing. You're not Noah. If you were, you'd have known to build a much bigger boat. Um... You can't just like, I mean, I get that the Puritans did it, but pretty much all the real estate's taken. You can't just sail off and start your own little God colony. There's kind of nowhere left. This is, I can, I can sail a boat. God will lead me. That's like saying I can fly a plane. God will tell me how, or I can take out an appendix. God will show me the way. God wants you to take a lesson. Take a fucking online course. University of Phoenix, something. Take a fucking lesson. God gave us resources. Seriously. Seriously. And here's the other thing. Like, if your idea of religious persecution is that other people aren't being persecuted for not following your religion. No. You need to do some studying on religious persecution. Yes. Yes. You're doing, you're getting it kind of wrong. Like, if your complaint is that there's too much religious freedom. Mm. People don't have to believe what I believe. Yeah, but I, I still I find it amazing. They leave. And if one could say God exists, he let them have it with both goddamn barrels. And then sent them right back home and they sent them fucking home. <laughs> OK, motherfuckers, you want to play in the boat? Fucking play in the boat, huh? You like to vote? You like to vote? Now get the fuck back to Arizona. Stay away from the rest of the world. You'll contaminate them. It's kind of like that scene in um in Kill Bill One when the bride encounters the very last y Yakuza and he's like sixteen. Yeah. So she spanks exactly. him a bunch of times and says, "Go home to your mother." Exactly. You just got like the metaphorical bride spanking. And sent home to your mother. Get the fuck back home. I mean, God. And I mean, you don't have to live here. By all means, move to another country where you think you'll be happier. But Just take a, a plane. Do so in a less incredibly stupid manner that is not going to sap the resources of several governments. Because this probably cost tens of thousands it was of dollars. Probably really expensive to get them home. And oh, while yes. I wouldn't say don't rescue them, like they're human beings, by all means, rescue them. And I have no problem paying my tax dollars to keep people alive. But maybe, you know, next time, just be a little smarter. Yeah. Like, just get on a plane and emigrate somewhere. If you 
get someone else. If you must go on a boat, get someone who knows how to sail the boat to sail the fucking boat. And if you want to leave it in God's hands, throw a dart at a map and decide right. where you're going to you buy go. a ticket to. There you go. There are smarter ways to do this. I mean, fine, leap of faith, whatever, but a leap of faith doesn't have to be a leap of idiocy. This was just... just I'll know exactly what all... I can use a compass and a sextant because God will tell me how. What's he gonna do? Send you a fucking telegram? Yeah, that ain't what Jesus take the wheel means. No! Jesus ain't gonna literally take the wheel. He has other things to do. <laughs> He's a busy guy. He's Jesus. Uh... He's too busy fighting a PR campaign against all the people who are getting his shit so wrong all the time. Uh, I just, it, stop it. Just. I mean, it's a wonderful thing to have that level of faith, to honestly believe that. Well, God will look out for you. There's a level of faith. But there's also God helps those who help themselves. Yeah. Like the way that God is looking out for you is that God gave you the higher intelligence and brain function to know when not to do something stupid. Yeah, I, I guess I guess the, the, the what we need to take away we learned from that one is God gave you a brain. Listen to it. Yes. And if you're not sure yours is very good, find someone else who is and ask them. Yes. Someone has a brain that works. Do you have your Jesus buddy? <laughs> hey, is this a good idea? No. Ooh. Okay. There you go. Problem would have been solved. I promise you, Christians of the world, and I say this as someone who was raised Catholic, I promise you, Jesus doesn't want you to be a moron. No. Jesus wants you to be smart. And do smart things and not be an idiot. Because that makes him look bad. Why would he want that? Why would he want you to look like an idiot in his name? That's bad. That's bad PR. We've learned this week there are fish that will eat your testicles. I just, I, I don't know what we can add to that. And just, these people are lucky they didn't run into those fish. Like, you don't just go around fucking with the open ocean. It's not a good idea. One does not simply walk into natural, naturally occurring waters. There is evil there that does not sleep. I'm just, you, you're on that. I am preoccupied. There are fish that eat testicles, Tara. That's what I'm saying. This is priorities for me. There are reasons I don't swim in naturally occurring waters. I, I had my legs covered by leeches swimming in a pond in North Carolina as a child. There is evil there that does not sleep. We've learned that, you know, I don't know what we learned about the naked guy at the intersection, although someone will always find a way to up the ante. I think it's well, we learned mean. that somebody's selling rabies and calling it LSD. Watch out for that guy. <laughs> Next season on AMC. Breaking Bad's ending. They got to do something. <laughs> They're not going to push Mad Men into the 80s. That'd just be ugly. Ugh. Um, we learned that I want to see Don Draper dressed like Don Johnson. But he would be in like his 50s, 60s or 50s or 60s at that point. Yeah, no, 50, so it'd be oh. creepy and gross. Yeah. Um, we've learned that the police are not your referees. Mm -hmm. If you're doing something illegal, you're going to be in trouble, too. Just because someone did something illegal to you does not mean you get a pass. They're not going to be like, OK, well, that was more illegal. They don't grade on a curve. No, they don't. Oh, my God. Um, we've learned that uh, someone in Florida going to get sued. Right soon. Can you really say we've learned that? I mean, that kind of happens every yeah, week. OK, uh, well, I guess we've learned that. Just, it's just sort of a friendly reminder now, more than a lesson. Take some if, if literature needs a little more analysis than just let's do what they did in the book. Yeah, yeah. 
And finally, we learned this week. At least do Harry Potter camp, for God's sake. That'd be fun. They probably have. I don't know license, but they probably have. I, I just and finally, we learned. Islam's not a country and 48 hours is not long enough to be in politics. We learned what haram means. I oh, didn't know that. I didn't know that either. We actually so we did that. actually learn a useful thing this week. I know. I'm scared. I'm scared. 